Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a process of valuing British American tobacco stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 67 billion market cap. They're trading at $29 a share and they have 2.3 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Like most tobacco companies, they have a lot of cash flow. And it pretty much goes up each year from 11.5 billion to 12.5 billion. They report their financials in British pounds. I convert it to US dollars since we're looking at the ticker that trades in the United States. When we look at their financials later, it'll be in pounds. Net income is a profit or loss on the income statements, revenue minus expenses. And that's consistent from 20 to 22. Then it jumps way up to 11.4 billion. Revenue is a sales for the company. And that goes up steadily from 32.7 billion to 35.8 billion. And if you look, they convert 35% of their revenue into free cash flow. If you take their free cash flow divided by their revenue, that's how you get that number. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value to all cash flows past year four, that's 154 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $146 billion. We divide that by 2.3 billion shares. We get a calculated stock price of $64. They're trading at $29, so they're trading at a 54% discount. It's a really strong buy according to the model. Pretty much all tobacco companies trade at a pretty big discount because they don't get as much visibility as a normal stock because there's certain funds that don't invest in tobacco companies. But if you're a technology company, pretty much any fund will invest in you. So that's why they pay really hefty dividends because they generally trade a lot lower than they're worth. It is unlikely the stock price will go up to these levels anytime soon. But don't worry, you'll still get your solid, consistent dividend. There are 13 companies in the same industry as BTI, and if they have a number in red, they're worse than the median. If they have a number in blue, they're better. They spend a good amount of CapEx, $750 million, because they have factories where they make their products, so they do spend a lot of CapEx. Philip Moore spends the most at $1.4 billion. They have a good debt to equity ratio. It's between the median and average. They pay the biggest dividend on this list. Altria also pays a lot. They generate more free cash flow than any company on this list. They rank third in market cap, even though they generate more free cash flow. They have amazing price multiples. They have a price to book below one, a PE below six, price to free cash flow of 5.3, the best on this list. They also have a good price of sales. It's between the median and average. They generate the second most revenue, second behind Philip Morris. They are still growing. It's small, 2%, but Philip Morris and Altria are detracting. They're getting smaller. Less and less people smoke, especially in America. Smoking is not nearly as popular as it was in the 50s and 60s, but more people are vaping and using alternative things. That's where companies like BTI can pick up market share. Let's take a look at their financials. This is through the first half of 2023. Their revenue is going up in the U.S. It was $11.5 billion in 2020, $11.7 billion in 2021, $12.6 billion in 2022, and the first half of 2023 is $5.9 billion. So it looks like they may be down in 2023, depending on the second half of 2023. They probably have more revenue in the second half because that's during Christmas time. AME is South America and Europe. It stands for Americas in Europe. And that also looks okay. It goes from 8.4 billion up a little bit in 2021, a nice pop in 2022 to 9.3 billion, and 4.7 billion in the first half of 2023. So they might get close to 10 billion for 2023. And these numbers are all in pounds. Asia Pacific, Middle East, and Africa. That's down. It went from 5.9 to 5.5. It is up to 5.7. 
And this year they may get close to six billion. So it could be up this year. Even with all the commercials against smoking and against tobacco, these companies are still growing. This slide is for the US only. 174 million units for vaping. That's in 2020. That went up a lot to 291 million. It's up even more to 320 million. 155 million in the first half of 2023. So they should have about 340 million for 2023. So vape is growing nicely. This row is chewing tobacco, modern oral pouches. That grew a lot from 2020 to 2021, 162 million to 600 million units. But then it got cut in half to 300 million units. And it's only 112 million in the first half of 2023. I wonder why it dropped so much from 2021. Traditional oro is SNUS. That went from 7.5 billion to 7.1 billion to 6.6 .6 billion. And it looks like it's going to be about 6.1 billion for all of 2023. Here is a picture of some snus. You just pop it in your mouth and the tobacco just drips right in. Regular cigarettes, that went from 73 billion to 70 billion to 59 billion. And it's probably going to be at 60 billion or the high 50s for 2023. That's in terms of volume. For revenue, combustibles, those are regular cigarettes. When you use fire, it's called combustibles. That's been pretty steady. 2021, 10 billion. 2022, 10 and a half billion. Probably a little over 10 billion in 2023. It's 4.8 for the first half. SNUS is a little over a billion dollars a year in revenue. The new categories, it was half a billion in 2021, almost 1 billion in 2022. And it's going to be over 1 billion in 2023. It's already at 530 million in the first half. Most of that is from vaping, 520 million. Modern Oral, only 10 million. Modern Oral are the pouches. And they're super profitable. It's all margin with this company. 50% margin, 2022, 54%. Already in the first half of 2023, 56%. Here are the stats for Asia Pacific, Middle East, and Africa. Vaping, 8 million units to 18 million to 31 million, probably 40 million this year. THP sticks, 8 billion 2020, 11 billion, 12 billion, probably over 12 billion in 23. Regular cigarettes, 270 billion, 280 billion, 270 billion, probably about 260, 270 billion in 2023. So most of their revenue is from regular cigarettes, close to 5 billion in 2021, close to 5 billion in 2022, and it's probably going to be close to 5 billion in 2023. And their margins are the high 30% range. Americas and Europe. That's South America and Europe. Vaping, 160 million to 226 million to 261 million. Probably over 300 million in 2023. Nice growth for vaping. Modern oral, 1.6 billion to 2.4 billion, 3.1 billion. Probably 4 billion in 2023. Cigarettes is pretty flat, 290 billion to 286 billion to 280 billion. This year, close to 300 billion. It's already 141 billion. And most of their revenue is from cigarettes. It was 7.2 billion pounds to 7.6 billion pounds. It might get close to 8 billion pounds in 2023. And their margins are the mid 30%. Tobacco companies are cash cows. That's why they pay such a nice dividend, but the stock doesn't appreciate as much as it should. And there's not much country risk for the UK. If it was in another country, like Brazil, there is country risk, and that's another reason to hold the stock price down. But UK has a pretty solid economy. Let's look at Yahoo Finance. $30 stock price, $67 billion market cap. You can see in the past 20 years, it pretty much only went up. There are dips here and there, because the market does come down as a whole, but it's pretty much a straight line. When you adjust for stock splits, it's under $1, and it peaked in 98 at over $10. It came down to below $5 in 2000. Lots of stocks came down in 2000 and 2001. Then it had a really nice run up to about 36 in 2008. Then the 08 crash came down to 20. Then from 09 to 2017, it got up to its highest point ever, 70 bucks. But it's pretty much been downhill since then. From June 2017 to December 2018, it went down about 60%. It hasn't done too well since then. It did get up to 47 in February 2022, but now it's trading really low. It looks like a great time to get in. Under 30 bucks, it's such a steal. 
Because even if you got it for 30 bucks in 2009, you would have made all your money back in dividends and then some. They're a really low beta, 0.3, so the stock is not volatile. It moves one third of the market. It's down a lot, 28% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P is up 22%. 52 week low is 28, the highest 41. The stock is trading below its 50 day and 200 day moving average. Maybe I'll buy this stock. It looks like a really good deal. About 8 million shares are traded each day the past 10 days. Of the 2.2 billion shares outstanding, 2 billion are on float. 7.5% are held by institutions. A really low short percentage, 0.12% of the shares are shorted. The forward dividend yield is 9.5%. The trailing dividend yield is 7.5%. You would expect the trailing to be lower because it uses the past 12 months to calculate the dividend. The forward uses the most recent dividend multiplied by 4. The X dividend date is 1221, so you want to own the stock by 1221 to get the next dividend. They've only done two stock splits, a 2 for 1 in 93 and a 2 for 1 in 2017. Let's look at simply Wall Street, trading at 30 bucks, 66 billion market cap, up 1% in the past week, down 27% in the past year. BTI engages in the provision of tobacco and nicotine products to consumers worldwide. It offers vapor, tobacco heating, and modern oral nicotine products, combustible cigarettes, and traditional oral products, such as snus and moist snuff. They offer their products under the Views, Glow, Velo, Grizzly, Kodiak, Dunhill, Kent, Lucky Strike, Pall Mall, Rothmans, Camel, Natural American Spirit, Newport, Vogue, Viceroy, Cool, Peter Stuyvesant, Craven A, State Express 555. They sell their products to retail outlets. They were founded in 1902, headquartered in London, UK. Simply Wall Street's at $87, they're with me. They say the stock is 66% undervalued. In 2012, they had revenue of 15 billion pounds. And over the next few years, it didn't do that great. By 2017, it was down to 14 billion. But then they had a really big boost. They probably did a big acquisition, up to 24 billion in 2018. Then a steady growth year after year, 28 billion currently. Their revenue forecast is pretty flat by 2025, 28.7 billion pounds. Their debt in 2012 was 11 billion pounds. And then it grew steadily over the next four or five years to 21 billion, a big jump. They probably made a big acquisition, 49 billion pounds. That was in 2017, but they've been paying down their debt since then. It's down to 42 billion. Their equity pretty much follows their debt. It's a bit higher now. Their equity is 72 billion, debt of 42 billion. They don't keep much cash on that balance sheet, as you can see. They currently only have 4 billion of cash. They give a lot of cash out to the investors for dividends. The vertical green line are their dividend payments, and these are by quarter. So their highest dividend was back in 2014, 164. It looks like they've been paying a high, then a low dividend, then a high, low, high, low, high, low. Then they kept it pretty steady starting in 2017, around 60 cents to 70 cents. And this blue line is their yield. As you can see, when they were paying a high dividend, their yield was 4%. And the yield got down to 2.1% in 2017. But the stock price has been declining, so the yield has been going up quite a bit. As you can see here, the yield currently is close to 9%, and the forecast is for 11% yield because the stock price probably won't be climbing too much, but they're going to continue paying that nice dividend. The CEO's salary is 800,000 pounds, total compensation almost 5 million. Their tenure as CEO is a little over nine years. Two thirds of the company is held by institutions, 22% by the general public and 10% by private companies. Capital Research is the biggest shareholder at 14%, then Spring Mountain Investments, 10%. They're an investment manager in New York City. The massive company BlackRock owns 8%, Fidelity 0.85%, Royal London 0.6%. You'd expect to see some British companies on here. And this company's employee stock plan, they own 0.58% of the company. You got to reward your employees with stock. Their employee count is fairly steady since 2012. It was 55,000, got up to 66,000. Now it's 52,000. They still employ a good amount of people. The ticker trades on the London Stock Exchange, Deutsche Börse, Zitra, Johannesburg, the BATS Europe, Mexican Bolsa, Bulgaria, New York Stock Exchange, 
and Sao Paulo Bolsa. So let me know what you think. Give the video a like, subscribe, or comment below if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel. You can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.